Her Excellency Justina Mutalik. Thank you. Salam alaikum. His Holiness, Excellencies, respected Tony Collin and his team, and everybody at um, Amadia, of course, all protocols observed, and due respect to my fellow speakers. As you have heard, I am a gender advocate. My organization advocates for the political and economic empowerment of women. Therefore, my idea of attaining economic equity, eradicating poverty, and find a key to peace lies in women. You see, for centuries, women and their potential contributions to economic, economic advancement, social progress, and environmental protection have been marginalized. In failing to utilize the potential and talents of the female population, the world has been underinvesting in the human capital needed to assure peace and sustainable development. It has been said several times from different quarters that a world that runs on half its human capital, half its human potential, and half its economic capacity is one that is bound to fail. And as we all know, women make up 51% of the world population. In some quarters I've heard they make up 52%. It is therefore my belief that utilizing women's potential can increase economic growth, reduce poverty, enhance societal well-being, and help ensure peace and sustainable development. It is also prudent that the world invests in women's economic capacity to bring about transformative change that can enable real progress in the context of human prosperity and a peaceful and sustainable future. A number of studies have indicated that gender inequalities have led to high economic costs, social inequalities, environmental degradation, and conflict around the world. This is because the world's current economic model has been built on a masculine perspective where growth is fueled by competition, a quest for profits, and instant gratification without due regard to human and social consequences. Some of you might have heard someone somewhere say, if the Lehman brothers were the Lehman sisters, the world would have never suffered the economic crash that happened in 2008. The masculine economic model has led us to the current negative situation that the world finds itself in, filled with global human insecurity and perpetual conflict. I believe it is now time to awaken the feminine wealth. It is time to unleash feminine wealth into the world economy. For I believe that in order to secure peace, and sustainable development, the world economy needs to move from the masculine to the feminine. As we have seen already, the masculine economic model is failing because it has been focused on profits, unnecessary competition, instant gratification, and of course, conflict. While a feminine economic model would be focused on the welfare of the family, welfare of the community, welfare of the society, welfare of the nation, and of course, welfare of humanity. Therefore, a feminine economic model would ensure peace. A feminine economic model would ensure sustainable development. This would in turn secure human prosperity and the progress for all that we are all yearning for. Research has shown that an educated woman will educate her children. A child born of an educated woman will go as high or as far 
in education as that child wants, unless that child doesn't want to proceed to the next level in education. A child born of an affluent woman will naturally lead an affluent life. Research shows that the prosperity of a woman naturally trickles down to her household and spills over from one generation to the next, thereby empowering humanity and its future generations to come. We are now in the digital age and the world is moving into the fifth industrial revolution. It has been estimated that by the year 2030 there will be over 1.5 billion new jobs requiring new skills. Women and girls, therefore, need to be equipped with the necessary tools and skills suitable for the employment of the digital age and, of course, the economy of the future. A number of studies devoted to examining the role that venture capital investment plays in economic development have shown that these investments help to enhance and sustain growth, that they help to support innovation and contribute to job creation. Studies further show that more readily available venture capital is likely to lower unemployment rates because venture capital plays a crucial role in bringing about employment growth and it provides a source for financing for new firms, for innovation, and of course, for structural change. But how then can we account for the impact of venture capital on the economy if we do not articulate the women's share in the market and take into consideration the role of women in the economy? In this digital age, we are seeing the rise of women-centered innovations with a new generation of women increasingly stepping into innovation and entrepreneurship, bringing onto the market products and services designed for women by women, products that are based on the pain points experienced in daily life pain points that women experience in daily life and designed to reflect women's direct needs. Statistics have shown that globally women control 85% of consumer spending. However, despite accelerated efforts by women when it comes to funding and entrepreneurship, women's access to capital is minimal. When a population that controls 85% of consumer spending yet only receives 2% of venture funding, there is a fundamental disconnect at the leadership level in the business and investment community. And of course, there is something seriously wrong with such an economic model. It has been proven that through work, Human beings can develop their capacity to think, to create, to provide, to care for others, and to contribute to the advancement of humanity. But work cannot yield productive results for families, communities, societies, and humanity when the participation of half the world population when the participation of women and girls continues to be marginalized. In the current economic model, work does not yield viable subsistence for the majority, and therefore it does not contribute to overall happiness of humanity. My brothers and sisters, the way we define and arrange our economy expresses what we value and should be intimately related to advancing societal well-being, the attainment of peace, and of course, securing sustainable development. The current narrow and materialistic worldview underpinning much of modern economics has contributed to the degradation of human contact. Conduct, I beg your pardon. It has also contributed to the exploitation and marginalization, as I said in the beginning, of large segments of the population 
more especially women and girls, through poverty and, of course, its feminization. In conclusion, my brothers and sisters, we need to ask ourselves whether economic arrangements should only be concerned with the accumulation of material wealth that enriches only a few, or whether our economic arrangements should aim to enhance collective prosperity and promote community well-being and human prosperity. I sincerely believe that an all-embracing feminine world economy would help to achieve environmental sustainability. I also believe that an all-embracing feminine world economy will help achieve human prosperity and progress for all, and thereby help us to eradicate poverty and, of course, secure world peace. Thank you.